Hi, this is Carl for Today in Tokyo. I've been talking to some people about the Kyle Rittenhouse court result, trial result, and I've been really, not surprised, but disappointed in how illogical people have been approaching this issue. Now, personally, I'm an anti-gun person. I think to satisfy the corrupt interpretation of the Second Amendment, all we really need to do to make society safe is to have guns in an arsenal in the city hall. If that improbable day comes when a tyrannical government rolls down the street with armored personnel carriers flanked by Apache helicopters, you could go and get those rifles. I don't think private citizens should walk around with guns. I'm mentioning that to show emphatically that I'm not defending Kyle Rittenhouse and I'm not defending the issue of his having a gun, nor am I defending his having killed people as some aspect of an interest in guns or a conservative agenda. I'm diametrically opposed to the conservative agenda, and I agree with Justice Brandeis, who said that the greatest fraud perpetrated against the American people is the corrupt interpretation of the Second Amendment. As an English teacher, I know that Americans are totally misunderstanding what it says, and in other cases, they're lying about it. So that said, now that you know how I feel about guns, I'll explain to you why I am satisfied with the Kyle Rittenhouse judgment, even though I think it's tragic, and I think that it's foolish that he was there with a gun. First, let me talk about the human condition. We are animals. We are socialized, industrious, intelligent animals, but we are animals. And put in a fight and flight situation, we don't make decisions that are comfortable and we don't make decisions that are in the luxury of a placid state of mind. Crimes of passion are called that because when they are committed, they're committed in a state of high intensity fear and stress. The body is flooded with cortisol. The heart is beating at a high rate. The respiration increases. We perspire. We have an increase in testosterone. We're truly animals fighting for our lives in such situations. This is the situation that Kyle Rittenhouse found himself in. And we can pass judgment on whether or not he should have been there. But he was there. And if he had been a little bit older, if he had been not in a questionable situation about crossing a border into the town that he worked in and that his father lived in and that his friends and family spent time in, and we could say that there was some wrongdoing there, but we have to judge the case as the jury and the judge had in terms of how the situation unfolded. And what unfolded was that he went and he gave an interview and he said that he was there to help. And he backed that up by giving first aid to people. And he went there and he put out fires. And he went there, whether we like it or not, to protect property, which is a civil right of Americans. And he had a gun. Now, if he were a 40-year-old man and he acted the same way, he might still be within his rights because he was attacked, excuse me, he was attacked violently. He was threatened with death. It's not up to us to decide whether those threats were probable or not. It's up to us to decide how he reacted in the face of those threats because we can't tell. And what we do know is that he was harassed for putting out fires. Imagine that. He ran from people who pursued him, which is what he should do, as people have said. But they caught up to him. They caused him to fall. A man jumped and kicked him in the face. Another man previously tried to hit him. Another one pointed a gun at him. A gun was fired. He heard people say, get his gun. He didn't chase somebody down with the intention to kill him or her. The people that he killed in the commission of self-defense died because they were attacking him and frightening him. Now, some very educated people have said to me, when you have a gun, you have to have more responsibility. That's true. But I've used the example of Marvel heroes, and now I'll invoke the Star Trek character, Kirk, who was often seen not killing his opponents in deadly situations when he had the upper hand. 
this is drama. This is fantasy. We can't expect this of a person who's being pursued by people who said that they wanted to kill him, by people who tried to get his gun and almost did. We have to take the situation as it unfolded with the people involved. We can't supplant what we would do in retrospect in the peace and calm of our armchair decision-making now for what really happened. We have to take the situation as it was. He was attacked, he was threatened, he was frightened, he was being set upon by people who wanted to get his gun. And as a gun enthusiast and a police enthusiast and a person who wanted to be a law-abiding citizen, he knew that he had to protect the gun. Because had the gun been taken from him, he would have been doubly at fault for what would happen to him and others. And he couldn't weigh the possibilities at that time. Just as police are told to shoot to kill in certain situations, he shot to protect himself. I would hope that I would do differently in that situation, but it would be completely unfair for me to judge him by what I would hope I would do. And that's unfair of you if you do that. In the courts of law in the United States, situations like this can only be judged on the merit of the facts presented. And some things are not presented because we have to isolate the cases to be stoic about it, to ensure that in the future, the political process doesn't overshadow the legal one. People are talking like they want a political solution to this. They're talking about what would happen to a person of a different ethnicity in this situation. Those things are irrelevant in this case. They're not irrelevant politically and socially in our country, but they're irrelevant in this case. It's after the fact political desires that are causing people to say, well, I want a different outcome. A different outcome in this case would mean that you couldn't defend yourself in the face of deadly force. It would come down to a community as to whether or not you were terrified and afraid for your life. I think it's ridiculous, but Florida has a stand your ground law. You're within your rights to kill somebody you feel threatened by. Because it's recognized there, whether we agree with it or not, that in a fight or flight situation, you can't judge with the luxury of a calm, intellectual, contemplative period of thinking. You have to judge in that moment like an animal. And that's how he was treated, and that's how he reacted. Now, people will say you have to have more responsibility when you have a gun, and I'll agree that that's true. So the judgment that we can only levy against him would be about whether he was to be there or not. But it's not illegal for people to be there with a gun who are of age, and that's why the police let him go by. They didn't know his age. They probably should have investigated. But that's another indication to us and to Kyle Rittenhouse that we have a society that we have made, that we have wrought, that we have allowed, in which a person can have a gun at a protest. And that person deserves not to be attacked. You can't just say, I disagree with guns, so I'm going to attack you. That's criminally insane behavior. And that's what he was facing. He didn't take the gun there to cause a problem. If he wanted to, he could have set up an ambush post and hid and shot people. He went and turned himself into the police after that tragic situation where he killed people in self-defense. And people are saying that he shouldn't have been there in the first place, but again, that's after the fact. And people are defending those who attacked him, but not examining their judgment. They were adults. He was a very young man. If you attack a person with a gun, I'm not saying that you deserve to be shot, but you certainly earned it if you do get shot. You asked for it. You can't ask him to be Captain Kirk in a situation like that. The cameras aren't rolling. It's not Hollywood. It's a real situation. I've been in fight or flight situations. As a person who has a certain biochemical makeup and hypoglycemia, I go into the fight or flight response a lot faster than the average person. It's why I've warned people not to upset me and to oppress me in a violent or oppressive way or an unfair way. It's why I've asked people not to attack me unjustly. It happened once in South Korea in a school. I was harassed repeatedly by somebody. And being a largely pacifist person, a Zenist, a Buddhist, a Stoic, a person who focuses on virtue. I said to him, let's talk about this later. He persisted and persisted and persisted until I had to try to leave the staff room of the school I was working at. 
He wouldn't let me leave. I finally had to strike him, and we wrecked the staff room. And it was all his fault. Prior to that happening, I said to him, please don't make me angry. It was like a scene out of the Hulk. And he said, oh, you're threatening me? I said, no, I'm not threatening you. I'm telling you that you're raising my response level to a point where I will no longer be responsible. And he eventually did. And I cleaned his clock. And the police eventually came and they ruled in my favor. If you antagonize a person with a gun, it's a lot different from antagonizing a teacher in a staff room. And if you do that, you must think you have some power over that person. These people were using the power of the mob to violate his civil liberties, and they paid for it. I would say they paid too high a price for it, but they knew what the score might be. They saw a young man, probably thought he was a kid, they thought they could overpower him, they didn't know he knew how to use his weapon. Now let's talk about what would happen if the result were political and it were to satisfy certain ethnic concerns about political problems in America and prejudice. Let's say the ruling was based on what would happen to a person of a different ethnicity in that situation. Let's say we wanted to solve all problems like BLM raised issues and so forth by finding him guilty in a situation of self-defense. That would mean that what happened on January 6th would not have allowed police legitimate state militia men and soldiers to defend themselves with deadly force. That would mean that at every protest you can go up to the police and beat them with skateboards and raise guns to them and if they defend themselves they're wrong. And now you're gonna say, oh they're police. Are you, the liberal who's against me right now, and I'm a liberal too, going to tell me that you want that kind of situation? That you can never depend on the safety that might be provided by an armed policeman or soldier? You're going to tell me that you want to be able to beat policemen? And you want another January 6th. Are you going to tell me that because he's not a policeman, he doesn't have the right to defend himself? So this is what I'm charging here. I'm charging that people with whom I usually would align myself, liberal people, are going too far in this. They want more from this than is deserved. And they want less for people who have the right to defend themselves and their property. I wouldn't want to defend my property with a gun. But I could think of a lot of liberals now who do. I have friends who grew up hating guns, and now because they live in l rural areas, one of them who's a technician, one of them who's a professor, they have guns because they see what's happening in America. Left-wing people are now behaving like violent fascists and wanting for people not to be able to defend themselves according to the laws that we have not been good enough to change is completely and patently unfair. The result was correct. He was violently attacked and threatened. People tried to get his gun. People aimed guns at him. People had him on the ground and tried to subdue him. Someone said they would kill him. He fought to protect his life. And if you fight to take away that right, then none of us will have any rights or any rights to be protected by law enforcement. The Kyle Rittenhouse case, tragically, was adjudicated properly. Should he pay a penalty for having had a gun or crossing the state line? Perhaps, but not for defending himself. And if you wish for that, you're wishing for mayhem in America. Thanks. Thanks for listening.